Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. Hi, my name is Laura. Welcome back to the Cousins Code, guys. Today, Laura and I are going to have a discussion on two books that Laura and I have been reading, which touch on topics of love languages and principles and relationships. So we'll be leaving the links in the description box below so you can get them on Amazon if you'd like. Uh, also, we'll be discussing uh, where you can find resources for mental health just in case you need it. Um, obviously, this is an important subject to touch, especially um, given COVID. Um, a lot of people are suffering from mental health illnesses. Some people live alone, so it gets a lot worse. So we just wanted to make sure we touched on this subject and just know that everything that we do answer today is based on our experience, our family or friends that have told us stories. Make sure to consult with your doctor, your physician, whatever the case may be to get the proper help. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this video. And while you're here, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, okay. guys. So like we said in the beginning of the video, uh, Laura and I have been reading um, these two books that we really felt like we should include them in today's video just because they're very important on uh, love languages and like principles on relationships and miracles and stuff like that. So um, our first book, Laura's going to explain. <laughs> And also, we'll be leaving the links in the description box below if you would feel like reading these books um, for Amazon. Yes. So basically, this is what mine looks like. You know, it's a, it's a nice cover of a couple in the front. It's called Five Love Languages. Um, it's, and obviously, um, below it, it's a, a smaller title, The Secret to Love That Lasts. So, you know, it's everyone, um, everyone's best kept secret. There's, the divorce rate is crazy now. So you might want to read this <laughs> before you decide to divorce. Um, Cause it could be an easy fix that we're literally like missing, you know, uh, besides group. I mean, besides couples therapy, like family therapy, whatever the case may be, give this a read. It's actually really, really good. It has very good insight by Gary Chapman. And like I said, it's a number one New York's New York best time seller. Um, so it's definitely when I picked it up, when I saw it on Amazon, sorry. Um, I decided to immediately get it because I read the synopsis and I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I, what I want to learn more about. And I saw Gary Chapman, actually the author of this book. He's also a speaker and a counselor. And I saw him giving an interview, um, on a news site that I love watching. Um, and this was a few years back and I took about a year or two to get the book. When I started reading it, it's basically about the different love languages. It gives it in the title. The five love languages that are obviously the center of this book, the main reason why you should read it, are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, uh, physical touch. And I will let you know what my um, love language is. I, there, I also think that there's no specific, just one-sided love language. You know, there could be a yeah. mixture. Um, and, and that's also okay. Like, not just say, like, I like words of affirmation and everything else could go to hell. No. <laughs> like, I like, <laughs> I like physical touch, like I said earlier in this video. But I do believe in, in the, necess the necessity of words of affirmation, of also quality time. Those are big in, in my heart. Those are big for me. Um, and not just in a romantic partner, but also in a friendship. Someone that's not willing to put in the time, to put in the effort to see me, to, to you know, make sure I'm okay, um, you know, make sure my family's okay, like, check up on me, or, or vice versa, I check up on them, like, someone that's not willing to put in that time to hang out with me and see me, I mean, you know, what do you really have with that person, you know, if they're not willing to put in that time, so quality time is also a big one, and for me in a relationship, um, being that I come from a Latina household, um, we're very big on touch, you know, it's always like, hi, oh my God, I haven't seen you hug. Um, and I know with COVID that's probably going to change, um, low key, but it's still really big in me. Um, and in my relationship, you know, we always greet with hug, with a kiss, whatever the case may be. Um, and we do, uh, tell each other that we love each other often. Like, I think that's a very big thing, um, mm -hmm. for me, because keep in mind, you never know, um, and this is also a very serious topic too. You never know when is the last time you'll get to tell that person you love them and, and to hear it back. That's a very big thing, not just in a romantic relationship, but in your family. Um, I'm a very big believer in not leaving your house upset or not leaving your house without telling that loved one that you love them 
or hearing it back from them because you don't know if you're going to get to hear that again. And I, and that's why I think in my relationship, that's a very big thing. You know, the moment we see each other, like we, we let each other know, um, or the moment we say goodbye. And that's also due to the fact that we don't live together, um, that we probably displayed a little more than, you know, I'm not saying you, Michelle, I'm not putting you in the spot, but maybe more than someone that like Michelle that lives together with that person, whether it be a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, wife, whatever the case may be. Um, they may show it a little less because guess what? You live together 24 seven. So why do I need to show it in public all the time? But my relationship, we see each other maybe three times a week now. Um, obviously pre COVID everything was different. We saw each other more, but now with COVID, like things are a little harder. Um, and with work and everything happening in life, sometimes we don't get to see each other as much as we would like to. So when we do, um, we may show it a little more and, and that's also okay. Don't let your relationship be judged. So that's basically what Gary discusses here. Um, people are quick to, to call it quits on their relationship. Don't allow that to be you. Um, it could be an easy fix. And it's just more, you may be loving that person. You may be loving your loved one the wrong way. And that, that's also okay to admit. I may be giving my boyfriend gifts as a way of showing my affection for him, but that may not be how my boyfriend um, receives affection or likes to receive affection. Um, his way of loving may be words of affirmation. You know, that may be the way he would like to, to be loved. And if I'm giving him gifts, what does that mean? That means that I'm not giving him what he needs. Communication is key. Letting your spouse know that that's the way you want to be loved and letting, giving space for your spouse to tell you how you want to be loved. So that, that's literally what this book um, is all about, you know, going to that journey of finding what, what love language is your spouse into and what love language are you into? Honestly, reading this book, I kind of found out what my love languages were. So read it to find out. And it's, it's honestly really helpful and, and it changes you. I'm going to add it to my Amazon cart right now. <laughs> I sold it to Michelle. <laughs> Yay. Mission accomplished. Right. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm just going to do a little shorter version of what I'm Yeah. <laughs> wow, she basically read me the whole book. <laughs> Literally. Um, so my cousin, my older cousin, told me about this book um, when I was having a really hard time in my life. Um, and basically, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to say that this is for everyone, you know, because a lot of people um, don't believe in religion or they don't have a specific religion. I am someone who has a lot of faith in my religion, and so is Laura, so I thought this was appropriate for our conversation, but I mean, it won't be appropriate for everybody, so just to put that out there. Um, so it's called A Return to Love by uh, Marianne Williamson. Um, it's Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. Uh, so they have chapters for uh, principles on like your faith. So like about God, how about you, how about you surrender to God, about miracles, about how you can live your life through faith. Um, and basically a return to love is like, like a healthier place in your life if you're having a really hard time. Um, on the back of the book, it says one of my favorite quotes. I think everyone knows this quote is our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's like a book club right now. Um, Honestly. Yeah, I haven't finished the book, honestly, because I kind of took some time off to read Harry Potter, <laughs> but I will get back to it. And maybe we can have like um, a video on like books that we love. And then I'll that's what I was going to. Yeah, I'll give a whole synopsis. Like That's um... what I was going to say. Um, and we may even we may even put this book section here into a post so that um you can see where to purchase this book where to purchase michelle's book um and if you are a book reader um a bookworm like we are we will like michelle said have more um videos like this that are just about books maybe we could do like five ten minute videos sharing random books like that we're reading or that we would like to read maybe do like a, a reading list so. so a segue into our next topic um I kind of read a little part right here and it says healing is a return to love. 
So that brings us to our next point is I like mental that. health websites that you can visit. Um, so Laura is going to talk about one and then I'm going to talk about another one. So do you want to go first? Yes. Laura? Yeah. So um, the one that I've gone to um, both for work and, you know, for different resources um, needed is mental health in America. Um, and it basically kind of the whole point of the website is if you're having a mental illness and you want to learn how to balance um, having a relationship, which I think we touched on in one of our earlier questions, the importance of balancing the two, learning to deal and cope with your mental illness or learning to cope with the mental illness of your partner. If that's the case, like learning about that mental illness, that is, that is something you need to do in a relationship. You need to be willing to learn to educate yourself but also allow your partner to educate you as well. If they choose to, you know, they're not forced to, but if they choose to tell you tips on how they need to be treated or things that you need to do, if it is a physical disability or if it is a, a, a mental um, illness, let them tell you what they need um, and also take it upon yourself to learn a little bit. Um, so this has awesome resources. Um, and it tells you, um, it tells you a little bit about domestic violence, you know, some of the tips, the signs for domestic violence, how to kind of identify if you are in one or if someone you know is in one, is in a relationship where we're mental, I mean, with where domestic violence is suffered due to mental illness or whatever the case may be. Um, and it's also about educating your partner, like I said, on the mental illness. They have resource links where they can get educated. Uh, so the website that I wanted to talk about is the American Psychological Association. Um, I mean, this only pertains to America, where we are. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if you are in another country, tr please try uh, Google, Bing, whatever search engine you use to try and find similar ones that work for you in your country. Um, so the American Psychological Association has resources for like families and relationships. Uh, you can also find a psychologist near you if you are in need of one. They also have um, tabs on like health and emotional wellness and coping with COVID-19. So if you go on the website, you can click on in the interest areas. And if you click on family and relationships, they'll show you a bunch of articles, for example, uh, money in the family, so creating good financial habits, uh, healthy divorce, how to make your split as smooth as possible, especially during COVID. I mean, Laura did say the divorce rate is going up, unfortunately, so maybe this article can help you if you are facing something like that. And then they have, um, so like COVID-19, uh, coping with COVID-19 and distancing. So they have uh, keeping your distance to stay safe, psychologist advice for newly remote workers, and information and resources uh, for like healthcare workers and the public. So if you are in need and you feel like you are having a tough time, please go to this website. You can also contact the psycho like psychology help center through their website and it says talk to an expert. That was a very detailed explanation. <laughs> that was like me giving um, the whole book. <laughs> you gave the whole website. No, I was kidding. It was good. It was detailed and people now know what exactly they will find if they were to search the website. <laughs> and so this takes us to our next point, um, which is our biggest point. One of our biggest points, obviously, besides relationship this is something that is a must in every relationship. Self-care. Self-care is a huge thing because there is no relationship, you know, without the self-care of you and your partner. You need to take care of yourself in order to be in a relationship. You find something to do. So that's what we're basically saying. We came up with a, a list, like a very short list, Michelle and I, of things that we enjoy doing, you know, and not necessarily with a partner or with a friend or whatever. Sometimes we just need that alone time to think um to think about life to think about what we want to do in our careers maybe to just relax or maybe even to sleep um right. so one thing that i really liked from our list is um reading a book like i said reading a book is such a relaxing thing for me it's something that i enjoy doing and i know michelle does too um and whether it be something like fiction like harry potter is or something you know a little more like the five love languages Another one that we almost forgot, which is a very big one that I liked, I think Michelle added it in there, 
um, writing a journal. Um, I don't personally do this and I've been meaning to, I swear, I even bought my journal. Um, and I started taking, um, mindfulness class, you know, all about consciousness and being in the moment, um, and meditating. And I was learning to do all of that. I'm a very big believer in meditation and the power of it, the power that it may have on you, your surroundings, the vibes along with the rest of your day. Um, but I haven't found time to do so and to apply it. And that's on me. Um, I make time for everyone. And I forget about myself. And I'm not just talking about my relationship. I'm talking about everyone in my life. Um, I feel like you need to make time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about yourself. Self-care is such a must. Yeah. I think also um, another form of self-care is your surroundings. You know, like create a space where you feel like yourself, where you feel comfortable, where you feel like you can relax. You know, after a long day of being around people that don't necessarily have great vibes or you feel like yeah. outside is so stressful for you create a place where you can come home and feel like you are safe your safe harbor basically so you know like put up things <laughs> i mean i didn't buy these guys my cousin <laughs> she's probably seeing this video she still hasn't put them up but i don't want to ruin the walls so i have them like that <laughs> but you know light a candle put some incense in your room yeah put a lamp that has a nice color read a book in your bed lay down get nice little covers you know not everything has to cost money in order for you to feel like you are okay and that you're being taken care of take a nap (laughs) helps me all the time i took a nap me too 15 hours so Whenever you have a headache, like the one thing that will take my headache away, probably the only thing is a nap. Honestly, like take a break from this. Mm -hmm. This can sometimes be draining, believe it or not. Also, another thing that I wanted to add is that this sweater right here, um, it's from my cousin's company, Sulai. Yes, I noticed it. (laughs) Yeah. So since we were talking about self-care and self-love and all these things, um, her company along, well, her and Julie's company, uh, they do feature a lot of like self-care tips, like recipes for good, healthy recipes, healthy lifestyles. Uh, so if you go to Modern Muse on Instagram or modernmuse.com, you will find a bunch of merch like this that says disrupt, I love it. use. Uh, so go and check that out as another way of self-care. <laughs> and last, we just wanted to say that you should always check in with yourself. Always make sure that you're okay before making sure that somebody else is okay so like in an airplane when they're instructing you on what to do right they say put your mask on first before you put it on somebody else make sure that you're okay first before you make sure that somebody else yes is okay yes that was a really- i like that that's a good that was solid michelle <laughs> boom we could close with that <laughs> that if you didn't catch anything from our video just just <laughs> listen to what michelle just said michelle repeat it for the people in the back <laughs> and if nothing else works, you can always come back to the Cousins Code. <laughs> if you have any ideas on topics that you would like to hear from us or topics that you think are trending right now that you would like for us to talk about, let us know. And obviously, we'll consider doing one. Um, but yeah, write us, write to us um, and let us know what you thought about this video. And subscribe to our channel, guys, so you can be notified. And if you're just joining us, um, you know, and this is the first video you're checking out, don't forget to watch our very first Get to Know Us video to get to know us. Um, It's four of us. It's four of us, for those that don't know. Um, It's Michelle, it's me, it's Manuela, and it's Mariana. Manuela and Mariana are my sisters, and they're Michelle's cousins, just like I am. And that's why we're the Cousins Code. You might see Stephanie in the first couple of videos. Yes. That's about it. She's a traitor. We don't talk to her. <laughs> no, we can no. be back yeah. one day. When yeah, she will. Enough. So like, comment, and subscribe, please, so we can get yes. her back. <laughs> I know. We love her and we miss her. Um, I miss Michelle. We haven't seen each other in so long. So Michelle, I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. See you next time on the Cousins Code.